Go, go, go. No. Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to 3305. This is where I take a look at the news and happenings in and around Elite Dangerous. This week, the Distant Worlds 2 expedition gets underway, the Elite Dangerous servers fall over, and Waypoint 2 of the expedition is revealed. On Sunday, Distant Worlds 2, the largest community-based event ever for Elite Dangerous launched. With approximately 11,000 players registered to join the fleet worldwide, the launch times were split across three different time zones. The European one launched first at 8pm UTC on Sunday, and it's very likely that players from the other time zones joined in on this particular launch. After meeting at the first waypoint in the Polini system, all players collectively attempted to initiate a hyperspace jump at the exact same moment. Unsurprisingly for many people, this ended up in causing the servers to completely fall over. Not only were nearly all players disconnected, regardless of whether they were mining and bounty hunting or a part of the Distant Worlds 2 expedition, they also found themselves unable to log back into the game again. The server issues persisted for around an hour or so, with some players able to connect and attempt a few jumps before getting disconnected again. To their credit, despite it being a Sunday, Frontier were quick to acknowledge the issue and begin fixing the problems. Eventually, players were able to log in and begin the journey across the galaxy without many more issues. Focusing on the server issues for a moment longer though, this is far from the first time that the game has had issues with larger player numbers. In recent months, there have been at least four occasions resulting in disruptive server-wide downtime. These include the Chapter 4 beta launch, twice during the Chapter 4 live release week, and now the Distant Worlds 2 departure mass jump. All occurring because huge numbers of players are doing the same activity, be it updating the game, logging into play, or all jumping together. Each time, Frontier have insisted that they were prepared for the numbers of people and that they had put measures in place to keep the servers running. To be perfectly fair, there is absolutely no reason to doubt them on this, and personally, I'm entirely sure they did their best to keep things running. But that raises another entirely separate question. If Frontier prepared the servers for these number of players, and the servers crashed anyway, then it will suggest that there is still an issue somewhere, whether in the code, hardware, or elsewhere. Now, there's possibly some implications here as to what that could be, but I'm not personally qualified to answer that, as I'm not a developer or a server engineer. Whatever the reason though, at some point the servers need to be able to handle high numbers of players without these type of issues. Although, to be perfectly fair here, there were around 10,000 people all attempted to jump at the same time, so that's the same action occurring at the same moment, and the servers are not facing that type of situation with any sense of regularity. But even still, of course there's hopes that this won't occur again on the next launch from the second Distant Worlds waypoint. Also, as a side note here, the launch from the US time zone went off without foul, so that in itself is something. Now that said, none of this does take away in any way whatsoever from the monumental effort put into the Distant Worlds 2 expedition, which the initial server issues aside has already been a fantastic success. The journey across the galaxy that is Distant Worlds 2 has always been intended to be a voyage into the unknown, both in terms of locations and in terms of scientific discoveries. With this in mind, the expedition has been planned in such a way to carry the fleet across the galaxy through some of the most amazing locations. The fleet will now travel for 20 weeks to reach the destination of Beagle Point. Along the way, there will be smaller destinations called Waypoints. These are stop-offs that break the journey down into smaller, manageable segments. They also allow for Distant Worlds 2 to be a great adventure with a variety of activities planned along the way. The organisers decided against revealing all waypoints ahead of time though, and instead the plan was to reveal each waypoint during a specific departure. For example, one hour before leaving waypoint 1, the destination for waypoint 2 was revealed. This process will continue throughout the journey. Here's where things get really interesting though. The waypoints are not released as a mere text update, but instead as a fully comprehensive travel plan featuring maps, scenic highlights, and other things besides. The Waypoint 2 update then came in the form of a fantastic forum post from organizer Eremus. Here you can see a stunning map showing a part of stage 1 of the journey. Personally, I really enjoy these maps as they have a very old world feel to them, similar to the ocean maps of the past. Waypoint 2 is in the Omega Nebula and along the route there are a number of locations to visit. These include Shapely 1 and the high gravity world of the view. 
For more details on this waypoint update, do check out the forum post which you can find in the video description below. The Distant Worlds 2 community event has naturally gathered a whole load of attention from the gaming press. Polygon's Charlie Hall is going along for the ride on the expedition, and the website has already posted numerous articles. Eurogamer, Kotaku, and Rock Paper Shotgun are among many other sites that have been paying attention to the expedition as well. If you haven't had a chance to check out these yet, you can find a selection of articles linked in the video description. That then brings us to an end of this episode of 3305. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.